Hi, this is Annie Grace, and I am answering readers' questions and listeners' questions. So I have such a cool question. This question is, hey, Annie and team, I'm such a huge fan, longtime consumer, first-time asker. So cool. In your recent podcast with Sam, episode 459, you touched on something I'm experiencing. Despite swearing off booze in the morning, even being hung over all day, pouring it all out at 3 or 7 or 10 a.m., I often find myself rushing out after work to buy more, <laughs> despite the fact I've just poured it all out. And after the first beer or two, I'm like, what just happened? It's like I watched myself give in to my craving and re-up my supply. And it scares the bejesus out of me because you touched on this in the podcast with Sam a little about how one part of the brain seems to shut off and give in. I'd like to hear more about that automatic giving in and how to best combat it. Is it something I'm currently struggling with? If you use my question, keep my identity private. Of course I will. And thank you for all the work you do. So this is such a great question. And you know the reality is that what... It has been shown in MRIs, which is basically a brain scan of the brain, when they give a human being something that they have been addicted to. So it could be, you know, if it was uh, someone who's addicted to heroin, they give them a picture of a syringe or something very familiar to them. Someone who's addicted to alcohol, they take their favorite type of alcohol, they put images of it, and they actually measure what's happening in the brain while they see these different images. And the reality is that the prefrontal cortex, so the part of our brain that makes human decisions, this is the part of our brain that has the ability to uh, really predict like, okay, that that's gonna be bad. There's gonna be consequences for that decision and really actually overcome you know, these triggers and urges in the moment, that part of our brain kind of goes blank. That part of our brain becomes almost shut off. And so what takes over is the much more animalistic part of our brain, the part that has been wired for that trigger or for that craving. And so it can feel like we don't even know what we're doing because the very human part of our brain is actually like going offline to some degree. Interestingly, alcohol not only affects the prefrontal cortex in the way that I just described, but it also affects it in two other ways. Over time, drinking alcohol weakens your prefrontal cortex. And remember your prefrontal cortex is your ability to make decisions for your future your ability to weigh the costs of your decisions in the present and say, although I really want this and my body is telling me I want this, I'm not gonna choose this because there's a future outcome that I don't want. That's your prefrontal cortex. It's often called the CEO of your brain. It's the part of your brain that makes you different from animals because you aren't just working on instinct. You can actually plan, have forethought, all those sorts of things. So not only does alcohol drinking over time affect it in general, but alcohol, just one drink affects it in that moment. And that's why one of the many reasons why it's so much harder to turn down that second, third and fourth drink. So that's the science behind it. Here are some brilliant ways you can combat this. Number one, and I know it sounds boring to a lot of people, but I'm gonna give you a really easy way to start this out is meditation. Meditation actually grows the gray matter of your brain. There is no better tool that we know of right now in the history of the world to overcome what you're talking about in these cravings and meditation. So don't start with just trying to, you know, if you've never meditated before, just sort of sit on, sit on a couch and close your eyes for 20 minutes. You might find yourself very frustrated. What I would do and how I started is I would set an alarm for four or five times during the day and have that alarm go off. And whenever the alarm goes off, you know, maybe you have an Apple watch or something like that, have it just buzz and notify you. Just stop wherever you are, just stop and take a moment and look around you and get grounded and like, okay, the sky is blue right now, or maybe it's gray right now. Maybe it's hot. Maybe it's cold. How do I feel in my fingertips? How do I feel in my toes? What is perfect about this moment? Is it just the fact that I'm breathing? That's perfect. Is there a perfect bird outside my window? Is there a perfect, you know, cup of coffee on my desk? Like what is great about this moment? And just for 10, 15, 30 seconds, bring yourself completely and totally into the moment. What that does is it interrupts that constant stream of thoughts. It allows you to use this part of your brain. And when you use it, you really exercise it. Then eventually you can start to actually try different breathing and mindfulness exercises. One of my favorite books is a book called Stress Less, Accomplish More. Now, despite the title, it is all about meditation, but it's about this meditation called the Ziva Technique. It's by a woman named Emily Fletcher. And it has three different parts. And for me, as someone who's been really challenged to turn off her brain, it was actually enjoyable. 
And it's so packed with science. So if you love the science, this book is a great primer on why meditation is so useful. But one of the main things is that if you do this over time, if you start to practice even those momentary minutes during the day where you're coming into your senses, when you're realizing what's around you, where you're having a bit of gratitude, you start to practice that, you will be better able to interrupt those streams of cravings when they're happening in the moment. The other technique I'm going to give you, just so important, and that is after the fact, take the time to really try to go back and understand what was your brain telling you that alcohol would provide as a benefit. Because there is the subconscious wiring. There's the fact that your brain is, is used to drinking. It's used to drinking at certain times of the day, usually in the afternoon or evening. It's used to having certain things and it turns on this entire craving. But the craving won't get past the CEO of our brain unless it has a logical reason. You need this because. So there's going to be some sort of justification in there, some sort of justification. And so with tons of curiosity and no judgment, I want you to go into that justification and be like, huh, what was it? What was the benefit that I thought that alcohol was going to give me? Maybe it was just to get me out of this discomfort of the craving, right? But write that down, journal that out, understand what was the benefit that you thought alcohol was going to provide. Because when you can go into those benefits, when you can have the courage and you have to do this with curiosity and no judgment for yourself, just really let yourself off the hook. Understand that this is a journey. This is a process. And the way out is through <laughs> the way to success is through all of these different types of learning from your own experiences. And so when you understand that you can say, okay, what was it? And there will be something if you just get quiet and look for it. And then I've done almost 300, I think now or more videos and podcasts on topics, find the one that talks about whatever justification or reason that your little brain gave you and dig into it and look at it. Because when we can eradicate all of those justifications, that will also help us get enough consciousness and enough present in presence in those moments of craving to stop the flow. Because this, the, we still need that little justification. And the truth is, is that you won't want something you don't believe provides a benefit. Now you will feel like you're still triggered and your body may feel like you want it until you can, you know, get enough distance, usually 10 to 14 days away from alcohol, get it out of your system, but you will be so much better prepared to kind of stop that flow in the moment, but you must do it with curiosity and with no judgment. And the last sort of technique I want to give you is if you can catch that craving while it's happening, maybe while you're driving to the store or while something's happening, um, and maybe you can better catch it if you set yourself an alarm for about the time it's going to be and just put on the alarm, you know, notice, right? And so you're not telling your brain because your brain, if you say, no, I'm not going to do it. And you try to push against that craving. It's like, it's like tug of war, right? <laughs> the cravings pulling one end of the rope, you pull the other end of the rope and all of a sudden you're in this tug of war and it can be very painful. But you say, no, I'm just going to sit and I'm going to give myself 10 minutes to notice this feeling in my body before I give into it. Just notice it, sit in your car in front of the liquor store and just watch it. No judgment, just total curiosity. Notice where, it, what it feels like in your body. You know, for me, it felt like a beating chest. Like, am I going to, am I not going to? I had a lot of frantic thoughts that I would notice. I would have a pit in my stomach that I would notice. You know, my palms might get sweaty. I would clench my jaw. That would be something I would do. I would try to get out of that immediate discomfort because cravings are by their very nature, very uncomfortable. Your brain has actually confused the substance that you're craving with survival. So it is uncomfortable like nothing else because your brain is saying, hey, if we don't do this, we're not going to live. And so that's the level that we're talking about when we're talking about those really intense cravings, the kind that at the beginning of this, I said in the MRI can actually make that prefrontal part of your brain go black because guess what happens when you're fighting for survival, that part of your brain, it's not needed. All you need is that animalistic instinctual part of your brain. That's the fight, flight, free, flee part of your brain. And so that's what's happening. So remember the discomfort of this craving, it's going to be massive. But if you say, I'm going to give into it, I'm just going to give it 10 minutes by the clock, set my alarm, or maybe 15 minutes by the clock and try to push the time a little further. And I'm going to sit here with the discomfort. I'm going to allow myself to feel it. Two amazing things happen. Number one, your brain says, wow, I survived that. And it's not as scary anymore. And you don't feel it as intensely next time. And number two, often people can notice that the craving it is like a wave. It will go up and it will peak 
and then it will kind of ebb and it will go away. And when you start to watch those things, you get the power back over what your body is telling you it automatically needs to do again for your survival. So keep in mind and have so much compassion for yourself because this is, this is real. Your brain is just confused. It's just confused the substance with something that you need to survive. And in order to unwind that again, there's those three things. The mindfulness and meditation start really slow, really easy. Be gentle with yourself, you know, really being conscious of what that justification was, what that logical reason is that you're giving yourself to pour that drink or to drive to that liquor store. And then number three, allow yourself. And this is the hardest one, but it's the most powerful. Allow yourself to be present in the discomfort of the craving for 10 to 15 minutes and see if you can notice how it, how it peaks and how your mind, like notice what your mind's doing. Don't judge yourself, just notice. And that will really help to overcome those moments of you feel like you're just on autopilot and you just don't know what happened. So what a great question. Thank you so much for asking it. And I hope you have a great day.